The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to the Happiness Jungle TV show. I'm your guest host today, Cami Baker, CamiBaker.com, and I'm excited to learn a lot more about LinkedIn and how to be a great networker and how to do finances and all kinds of fun stuff with my new friend, Oh Mama. Hello. Oh Mama. <laughs> Share with everybody how to pronounce your name because I'm not going to <laughs> mess that up, and then I'm going to share with them a little bit about how we met. Cool. Um, so it's pronounced Umama Marzuk, and that's about it. What nationality are you? So I'm Palestinian and a little Syrian. Right, you're beautiful. Thank you. Very beautiful. So we met at a local Boston event. Yep. A mutual friend of ours has Boston Men's Group. Yep, which I'm on the board of. And Which you're on the board of. And now you've started another Boston group. Tell us yeah. a little bit about the Boston group you run. So um, I'm the host and creator for LinkedIn Local Boston. And the purpose of LinkedIn Local Boston is to get meaningful relationships offline and actually execute them. Well, get them offline and actually execute them, making real conversations with people. The problem is that so many people engage online and they add you and they retweet you and they do all the stuff, but no one's really having meaningful conversations. Girl, I'm telling you, you're talking my language. Yeah. There is an epidemic, an epidemic of people who don't know how to communicate conversate, God forbid, collaborate to create the income, influence, and impact that we're all wanting to have. And all these people go to all these networking events and they throw their card yep. out and they grab a bunch of cards yep. and they shark the room. But I, it, it fascinates me. Thousands of business cards that I've seen exchanged and people just won't even call you. They yep. won't reach out. So bizarre. I don't do business cards. I haven't done business cards maybe like eight years, I'll bring them every once in a while, not to a networking event, but if I'm speaking at an engagement, just because obviously people come up to you and they're like, oh, can I have a card? Um, but I hate business cards. It's a waste of trees. And then most people, what they do is they put them in their drawer and they're never going to see it again. Mm -hmm. So um, with LinkedIn Local Boston, no one asks what you do. You don't pass around business cards. We're like, hey, everyone put on your Bluetooth. Let's put it on. We're all going to connect on LinkedIn right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that way you don't have to be like, oh, Cammie, like I was talking to you and I maybe forgot what you were talking about. Uh, maybe I forgot your last name. Nope. Let's just add each other all right now. Um, so no one asks what you do because really who cares? Um, that's not the purpose of building a relationship, you know, like who cares? You know what I've been saying to people lately, because this is always coming up for me and people always, well, how do I answer the question? What do you do? And, and, and I talk to people about be meaningful, masterful, memorable, and you're mingling and actually say something that people are going to remember. Right. So when someone does ask you what you do, be thinking about what am I doing? Right. What are you doing right. in the world? Like, what are you working on? Like, what are you passionate about? What gets you, what are you doing? Exactly. Yeah? Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, what gets you up in the morning? Um, when, when you say that at the group, they don't say, what are you doing? Uh, or what do you do? I, I always think, and I, I, I speak at so many other people's groups that mm -hmm. I haven't been creating my own, but I have this vision of having a meeting where I have one of those big round signs with a big cross through it. Oh you know, my God, that I would says, love that. You, know, <laughs> the, the, you can't say, what do you do? Yeah. Big, as a matter of fact, anybody caught saying, what do you do? You got to put 20 bucks in the pot and Ooh. all the money's going to go to a cause. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. because So right now, all the ticket proceeds always goes to various different charities. Um, we pick a different charity throughout Boston. Um, we depend on sponsors to pay for the food, the drinks, the water, whatever it is, um, and we don't profit from it. It's just, we're li literally just there to host. Well, you know, you're speaking my language with that, with yeah. the cause marketing. And, you know, one of the things about having a cause as a way to market yourself and your business is people will talk about a cause. 
They'll talk about the puppies. Mm -hmm. They'll talk about the veterans. They'll talk about this run for cancer. They don't really, even some of them don't even want to talk about their own business, but they'll talk about something else. Right. How do you pick the cause? How do you decide? Um, so I work with a committee and we'll, we'll come up with the cause, um, but we want it to be Boston based and we'll have different causes that's kind of related to whatever that month theme is. So for example, um, we've donated to just various different, different organizations. Um, and so for the one in March, we have two events in March and due to the fact that it's women's history month, the two organizations that we're going to be doing, it's something to empower women. Yep. Um, in, in young and young females as well too, because a lot of people, great, you give you give money or you do it during the holidays or when someone kind of like puts it in your face, but more often times than not, and I'm, I'm sure you've experienced this, that you go to networking events and again, people are talking about what they do, who really cares what you do, right? But sometimes they're afraid to talk about what they're passionate about or sometimes people are so caught up in their own world that they forget that, okay, great, you're being successful. Why not share that with someone? Mm -hmm. Why not start giving back? Um, I know there's a lot of people that give money for their church or they give, they'll do whatever it is to that they're donating, but it's only because it's in front of them. So my philosophy is if you're working, if you're having an income, well, there's a lot of people that aren't working and aren't having an income. Why not be able to give a little? Give a little bit of yourself to someone else mm. because maybe you're too busy and you can't give time. Or maybe um, no one's approached you and said, hey, can you donate to ABC Cause? Whatever it is. So we want to make sure that every single time you're coming to our event, that there's a different organization that you're donating to. I want to share with you that when it comes to the cause and how to bring your business and all that together, I'm working with the president of the Seacoast Board of Realtors. Mm. We are doing an event called Realtors for Recovery. Mm. And in Realtors for Recovery, which is going to be a culmination um, in the fall of a big event where we're going to do a TED Talk style, where, where we are sharing stories of recovery because they've partnered with um, the Rotary. Mm. And Rotary is looking to abolish, get rid of opioid addiction. That'd so, be amazing. So we're all partnered together to do this TED Talk where it's not TED Talk, TED Talk style. Right. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so everybody will have eight or ten minutes to come up and tell their inspirational story, stories of recovery, stories yeah. of hope, and do that fundraiser. Well, along the way, we're doing other little things. So, for example, right now there's a diaper drive going on. Mm. And come to find out, diapers are wicked expensive. And so many women, you know, are, have a hard time buying food, much less diapers. Yeah. So there's a place called Hope on Haven Hill in, yeah. the, in the Portsmouth area, and they help women who are pregnant or just recently given birth who had an opioid problem, and so they need diapers. So I'm talking to a couple of realtors the other day. I'm like, look, this is how creative you can get. Yeah. They're looking for diapers. One of the realtors happens to be pregnant. I said, what a perfect time for yeah. you. I said, who are your perfect clientele? She said, people my age that have already, she's in her 30s, they've already had a home, they're getting ready to sell, they're yep. looking to upgrade, et yep. cetera. I said, this whole diaper drive, here's how you leverage it. I said, you have that flyer to go gather up diapers. I said, you can go into the schools, you can go speak in front of the PTA, you can go talk to mommy and me groups, yep. all the Montessori groups, all the schools, in other words, these are your perfect clients. You have a cause that you can bring it all together. Instead of walking in with your business card, you walk and say, hey, you know, we're doing this diaper drive, helps Hope on Haven, helps Hope on Haven Hill, you know, d doing all the, the drive. Another one of the guys that's in it, he wants to, his perfect clientele is talking to, to people who are educated. He mm. likes to work with people who are in the education field. Yeah. I said, you can take this same diaper drive, go to the college, Go to the college. You can talk to the professors yep. and the teachers and the receptionists and all those people that you're doing this. You want to put a box out uh, in all the different buildings and all yeah. the students can can donate diapers and you can go in and teach it because he wants to teach. Yeah. So you go in and teach them how to go out and, and ask for donations. So in other words, being able to use that cause and that um, platform as a way to market themselves and their business. Exactly. You know, it's exactly. so powerful because nobody wants to walk in with their business card. Yeah. Hey, do you want to buy or sell a home? But like, we walk in and say, hey, 
here's this thing that we're doing. Do you exactly. want to get involved? And now you're seen and you're recognized. I just went to Grant Cardone. You would have loved it. Oh, my that. God. How was that? Right? Ah! Well, girl, Miami, um, the Marlin Park is a yeah. big Superdome thing. They opened the top 25,000 people. Dude, parachutes in. What? Skydives in. Skydives in. It was awesome. But he was saying, it's not so important who you know. It's who knows who? you. Who? Yeah. It's who knows you. Right. You know, when I walk into a place and people recognize me before I even open my mouth, that's good branding. Right. That's good marketing. And that makes people want to hire you. Right. You know how that is. That's, you know, you're doing the, the LinkedIn. So talk more about that. Yeah. And it's, it's a matter of people tell me all the time, like, oh, you know, everybody. And I'm like, I really don't. Right. And I, I put myself in a position where I want to be seen. Right. The more that you're out there and that you're seen and you're doing stuff, then people are going to come to you and go, hey, what do you actually do? Right. I see you here. I see you there. But what do you actually do? Um, and then I can let people know, well, OK, well, I help people with their finances. Um, is that something that you're interested in? But beside that, really, let's get to know you. Um, so. But at least now they're interested enough to know. Right. I say all the time, if somebody comes up and says, hey, what do you do? Like they always do, because they don't know what else yeah. to say. That's very different than, you know, I see you around all the time. I'm just what do you do? Exactly. Anyway, that's when they're really interested. Exactly. And that's when you do business with them. Yeah. So I don't, I, like, honestly, who cares what I do? But what impact am I making? Mm. What difference am I making? That's why when a lot of people are saying, hey, you're out there and I see you all the time. You're posting and stuff. And I'm like, I'm really not out there, but I'm where I'd like to be seen. Mm. Um, so I'm actually taking a social media hiatus um, from, I started in December and I won't be back on until March. And I actually have my assistant that's currently doing all my LinkedIn posts and stuff. Because I, at first, I just wanted to be MIA, um, but my assistant has taken over my LinkedIn. So all those posts, all those things, it's me communicating to her and then her putting Why? it out there. What's your strategy with that? Um, well, if you take a complete hiatus, people are going to forget about you, right? And then they're going to be like, oh, well, like, what are you doing? Um, also, the fact that I'm the host for LinkedIn Local, it's kind of hard to take a complete hiatus. Um, but I just found a, like, I just started a new company. I'm doing the whole rebranding, starting up my own business, starting up, making a name for myself and getting my, my name attached from um, my previous company and stuff, which they were a phenomenal company, but I want people to know me and my mm -hmm. company. So that's why the reason taking that social media hiatus. So I'm not caught up with what else is going on and I can actually focus on my business. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. But you don't want to be gone too long. Right. But, but you know, I, I actually was gone in the 2017. Yeah. I met a guy, moved across country, was literally going to change my name for this guy. Wow. And I was gone for seven months. People saw some Facebook lives here and there, yeah. but I, I really, I was pretty sequestered. He wouldn't yeah. even, he wouldn't even let me out of his side. It was crazy. But when I came back, it's kind of funny. It was like they never even knew where no, I was gone. Yeah. They never yeah. even, you know, we, we all think the world revolves around us. And then everybody's looking at me, looking at me. You know what? They really don't give a shit. Yeah. They're doing their own yeah. thing. Yeah. So it's true. And it's true that they, they don't really care, but they care enough to the sense that um, how come you're not at this event or how mm -hmm. come you're not there? And it's funny because people, there's such a difference between your real friends and your social media presence. Mm. And so some of my friends, um, I, I sent them a message, whatever, in December, and I was like, hey, I'm taking a social media hiatus. And they're like, oh, does that mean we're not hanging out anymore? I'm like, <laughs> wait a second. I'm like, we're friends in real life. Like, we're still going to see each other. It doesn't mean that just because I'm not online doesn't mean that you're not going to be engaging. Um, so, yeah, I, I really feel that in... I really drive for just women, empowerment, diversity, just making that other voice heard. Mm. And so if I can use social media as a presence for that other voice being heard, then people are going to, more oftentimes than not, people come up to me and they go, hey, I've gotten into the financial world because I've seen your posts. Mm. Um, I didn't think someone that looks like me, meaning like someone that's non-white or a male or in their 50s that can get into the financial world mm. or um, people have come up to me and said because of you I've been wanting to sit down with my family and talk about budgeting and talk about 
hey, how do we game plan? What's our exit strategy when we want to leave the business or when we retire or when we pass away? What are we doing? Um, so the more that you're out there and you're you're putting, you're actually doing stuff, not just like, hey, come out to this event or whatever it is, but you're making a difference and doing stuff in the community, more people are more likely gonna come to you and say, okay, what can I do and how, how else can I be a part of like your network? Well, you know, when you're talking about that, you know, because of you, you made me think of this, this, and this. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're making fun of what do you do, but the fact is, what do you do? In other words, you know, all of these things are wonderful, and the best way to help poor people is to not be one. So there's something that you're doing to generate income. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, listen, no, it's true. The, the more it's you, true. The more abundance you have, the more you can share. Exactly. You know, the, you can't help someone who's poor when you're poor, too. In right. other words you know, you got to ha have a way to raise people up. Right. So, you know, you're clearly not poor. You're clearly successful and got a lot going on. So without saying, what do you do? Who do you serve? Who do you serve? Ooh, Ooh Cammy. Okay. Who do you serve? <laughs> I like the question. I like the question. So, um, I serve women, my, mostly minor, um, minorities. So people like diverse backgrounds, um, business owners, veterans, um, families, and I want to be able to serve people that no one has really ever come up to them and talked about what do, what's your game plan? What are you doing? What are your goals? So my background before I got into the financial world was I was an accountability coach for real estate investors. Hmm. So, um, I would hmm. have, yeah, I would have, um, weekly calls with them, helping them with how are you going to get there, uh, with your goals. So their personal and their business goals. Um, when I got into the financial world, it was kind of like by accident and it's literally doing the same thing. It's just holding people. But now there's obviously different investments and insurances and all these other fancy words that you can use to help them actually execute their goals. Um, so it's when I'm when I'm trying to serve people, I ideally I'd like to serve everyone. But realistically, I'm serving women, I'm serving minorities, I'm serving business owners and veterans. Um, the reason why I cater mostly to women is because more oftentimes than not, women are depending on a male figure to help them with their finances. Mm -hmm. And when either that person passes away or that person, they get a divorce or um, whatever the, the reason is, women more oftentimes than not are just go like, mm. Now what do I do? So I want women to walk around feeling empowered and walking around with their head held high, knowing, hey, I got money in my pocket. You know, I got money in the bank. I'm actually good financially because what's the number one reason why people go to divorce? Money. Money, right? What's the, the number one reason why so many things go aware is because of financial reasons. So if you can have a good head on your shoulders and know that your money's right, you can walk around saying, how can I actually serve you today instead of saying like, what was me? Mm. Or, um, Whole looking, different energy. Yeah. Exactly. So I like to ask people like, um, those who I'm, I'm serving or those that I'm helping and whatever it is, how can I help you get into your great today? So when you're focusing on, I want to be great today and every other day, it changes the dynamic of the conversation. I have attracted in the past year, uh, uh, you make about about six or eight women who are in finances who are there because women are underserved. Mm. And, and usually there's a story behind it in that they got a divorce and realized they yeah. were in trouble or you know somebody passed away and they realized they didn't know what was going on, et cetera. What's the story for you that puts you in that place? Um, so never been married, so never been divorced. Um, <laughs> But finance, it wasn't ever really talked about when I was a kid. I knew that we had it. I knew we were like financially like, like blessed, but it wasn't a matter of a topic. I was actually the person my freshman year of college, I used to lose paychecks all the time, right? And I'd be like, oh, I'm like whatever. And my ex at the time would be like, are you kidding me? Like, how do you not care about money? I'm like, well, come back to me. Um, but the more I started reading and educating myself and surrounding myself with people who are actually financially well off, I'm like, oh. But the I think the, the trigger that ticked it was, so my dad's the breadwinner, my mom's a, a stay-at-home mom, a phenomenal stay-at-home mom, and there's definitely a huge um, difference with the, with the dynamic. And when my 
dad decided that he wanted to become one of my clients, I was like, cool, is mama involved? Mm. And he's like, why does she need to be involved? I was like, I don't think you understand the nature of my business. Um, I won't do business with you unless mama's involved. And he, just, he was just kind of like on a time constraint. And he's like, well, I need to get this done and stuff. I was like, all right, cool. Let's have mama sit down. Uh, and my mom, like when she was sitting down, she was like, all right, cool. Like, I don't really care. I'm like, I want you to understand. So my parents have a 12 years difference. My, dad, my dad's 12 years older than my mom. Um, I want my mom to understand because not saying that she she's when like in a long time when my dad passes, the, the world's going to end. But I want her to understand how does money work? Mm. What are we doing with the finances? Um, and again, it's not it's not something that's talked about because it's like it's there, but it's a matter of, well, what can you do to make sure that it's always there? Well, it, money is such a taboo, you know, like you said, you know, people get divorced because they're fighting about it and they fight about it because they just aren't communicating right. about it, you know, and then, and to your point, kids are not uh, educated about it. Women are left in the dark a yeah. lot of the time. So there's just such this taboo stigma. And I mean, even, you know, employees don't talk about it. They, well, they talk about how they don't have enough of it, but, right. they, but they don't talk about how they can make more of it, but it is, it's such a, a taboo. So speaking of that and education and things, yeah. You speak? You do speaking engagements? Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm speak. speaking right now. <laughs> I was like, I'm speaking right now. <laughs> Are you a professional speaker? <laughs> um, so, yes, I do I do public engagements. Um, I haven't signed up for the National Speaking Association yet, but that is on my to-do list. It's on my to-do list, too. Yeah. I haven't done it yet. Um, I'd like to, my end result, I guess, would be an internationally known person. And I'd want to be able to go around the world and actually educate people about the environment. So the financial part is the stepping stone. Mm -hmm. When you educate people about their finances, everything ties in together. And I'd want people to, there is absolutely no reason why we shouldn't have clean water. There's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't have the basic necessities for human life. And I want people around the world to be able to have that same thing. Mm. But when you can empower this mm -hmm. and empower this, this means money, not my hips. <laughs> but if you, can, empower if, yeah, if, yeah, if you can empower both, then all you're doing is you're just creating that generational wealth mm. opposed to that generation that just might have skipped someone else. Um, so my whole philosophy is generational wealth. But generational wealth doesn't just mean finances. It means mental wealth. It means your environmental wealth, your spiritual wealth, everything around you. And that's true wealth. And that's I'm what gonna, I'd like to do. I'm going to guess that your your rebranding, your new company, is going to encompass all of the different ways yeah. of being wealthy. Yeah. T. Harvecker has a book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. That book is phenomenal. Right? I've read that book numerous I, times. I it's read amazing. It, uh, about 15 years ago, I read it coming from the East Coast to the West Coast. Literally read it going across the country. And there was a chapter in there that I have talked about hundreds of times about the difference between rich and poor. Mm. And you always have to preface it that rich doesn't always mean money. It Correct. can mean uh, family. You can be rich in family, rich in health, rich in spirituality, et cetera. Yeah. So the difference between rich and poor people is that poor people think in either or, meaning if I had the choice of being rich or good, right. I would choose to be good. Right. And I'm from the South, Southern Baptist stuff going on. I can remember those conversations where it was almost like a choice. Yeah, You were either a good person or you were rich. Right. And you couldn't be, but rich people think all inclusive. Well, when I'm rich and good, right. look at all the good I can do. Right. Hence, hence the best way to help poor people is not be one. Yeah. So the more money I have, the more good that I can do. And so um, it's just a very different mindset of, of how can you do good and be abundant so you do more good. And it's true. Um, so my favorite author is uh, Jack Canfield mm -hmm. and I absolutely love him. So the success principles and the Aladdin factor are like my two go books. And um just in the Aladdin factor, and I might be biased, and I was like, oh, the Aladdin factor, I'm Arab, let me get this book, right? <laughs> but uh, So the Aladdin factor, it's really like creating what you want. And when you live that life of, I'm going to wake up every day and I'm going to live that life of abundance, it's going to come to you, mm. right? Every single person has bad moments. I don't want to call them days because your whole day isn't bad, mm -hmm. right? So everyone has bad moments, but if you 
actually reflect on like, hey, today's a good day. Like, great, I drove two and a half hours here. I got to be on a show. Uh, people are watching this. What a great day. I'm in front of you. Just focusing on that abundance, mm -hmm. and it's going to continue creating more and more abundance. And I feel like more often times than not, so tying this into like social media, tying this into just networking, connecting with people, people forget that you need to build those relationships to have that abundance. You need to actually care about people to have that abundance. If you keep thinking about like, look at me, look at me, look at who cares? Honestly, like who cares? We're all going to die, right? <laughs> some people might make it into the history books, some people won't. But what's that impact that you made? Is someone going to reflect on your life and say, hey, Cammy was a great person. Like, she did this, this, and this to me. Or are they going to go, what okay. Is it, what is it they say? People don't remember what you say. They it's remember how, you make, they, how yeah. you make them feel. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you bring up Jack Canfield and a couple of your favorite books because I always want to ask that, you know, as, yeah. as in, mostly women that I have, but men too, you know, what is it that turns you on? So we've got about a minute and a half left. Yeah. Um, what are some mantras, some affirmations? Like what is something you can leave for our viewers that would just help them through their next moment? Keep stepping into your great. Um, yeah, just continue stepping into your great. You're already great. And I strongly believe that, you know, God doesn't make any mistakes. Everyone's perfect exactly how God created them. Mm. So if you already know that and you already know that, like, God has blessed you with a life, so what are you doing to make sure that you're blessing other people with your greatness? Mm. Um, put on that happy face. And I'm not just saying, like, put on that mask, but, like, that true happiness. Um, yeah, keep stepping into your great. Yeah, I love so, that. I love uh, that. And what's the last thought? We've got about a minute left. Um, add me on your LinkedIn. I'll see you at LinkedIn Local Boston. <laughs> yeah. LinkedIn Local Boston. And uh, so you're looking for more causes? You're looking yeah, for looking more for sponsors. Speakers, sponsors. Uh, reach yeah, out all to the above. you for all of that? Yeah, yeah for reach people, out. For people that want to get active. And um, obviously, start start taking a look at your what your goals are, and your goals will generate what you want to do financially. Nice. What well, has been my honor yeah, to have you, you on the show? Your great energy. Oh, thank you. Getting me all wild <laughs> up. That's fun. It's fun for our audience too. I can't wait to be on the panel and come oh out God, and, so and watch you grow and help you yeah. grow and 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 play together. So happiness jungle. Yeah. <laughs>